Our practice is founded on goodwill, a wish for happiness. Our own happiness, the happiness of others. We're looking for a happiness that doesn't harm anyone. A point we always have to keep in mind, because most pleasures of the world cause somebody some harm. The person who gets intoxicated with the pleasures gets harmed. And other people who have to give up something for someone else, for whatever the pleasure is that you're seeking, that oppresses them, takes advantage of them. There's a lot of that that goes on in the world. And one of the reasons we want to look for harmless happiness is because we realize that if our happiness causes other people suffering, they're going to do what they can to stop it. It's not going to last. It's not going to be reliable. So it's in our own interest to develop thoughts of goodwill, to keep remembering that we have to be very responsible about how we look for happiness if we want it to last. There's a sutta where the Buddha is talking to someone about the attitudes you should have to mistakes you made in the past times when you actually have harmed people. It says you're resolved not to repeat that mistake, and then you develop thoughts of limitless, immeasurable goodwill. So you get your intention straight. It's, a, it's not just a sentimental thought, or well, may people be happy, but you realize that your motivation has to depend on goodwill, and it has to be a goodwill that doesn't make exceptions. Otherwise, you can't trust your intentions. So when we spread thoughts of goodwill, it's not just for others, it's for ourselves. So we can learn how to trust ourselves. And be more scrupulous in how we find happiness. That's an important thought to keep in mind, because there are times when you spread thoughts of goodwill and it's really difficult. Either negative feelings you have about yourself, or you look at the people around you. And the human race is not a pretty sight. You see thievery going on. You see, being, see ingratitude, cruelty, thoughtlessness. It's everywhere. And after all, you begin to think that these people don't deserve my goodwill. Well, that's not the point. You need the goodwill. And you meet, need to be able to make it limitless. As the Buddha said, when your goodwill is limitless, then you have a share in limitless safety. Because if you're resolved not to harm anyone, okay, you're not going to steal from anyone, you're not going to kill anyone, not have illicit sex with anyone, not lie to anyone, not take intoxicants under any situations. It's when your precepts become limitless that you have a share in that limitless safety. And for the precepts to be limitless, your goodwill has to be limitless as well. You can't reserve your goodwill only for people that you like or people that you feel deserve your goodwill. It has to go to everybody. That doesn't mean that we pretend not to see other people's negative traits. Because after all, you have to be heedful as well as you're dealing with other people. But there are times when you have to focus on their good traits just as one way of reminding yourself. Okay, there is something there that it's possible to feel goodwill for. 
but that's a crutch. Ultimately, you want to understand goodwill to the point where you don't have to think about other people's good habits or good good traits for you to feel goodwill for them. I mean, after all, it's compassion. As the Buddha said, that you see this person who has no good habits at all. The things they say, the things they do, the things they think are all corrupt. He said the attitude you should have toward that person is, is when you, you're going across the desert and you see somebody lying on the, on the roadside sick without any help. And so at the very least you would want to have at least somebody come and find that person and help them, even if you can't do it yourself. That's the attitude you should have. Because when you're wishing for other people's happiness, why do you want it to be true happiness? And two, you want you realize that happiness, especially true happiness, has to come from understanding. They have to understand the causes of true happiness and be able to act on those causes. So you're not saying, well, then may this person who's killing and stealing, etc., be happy killing and stealing. You're saying to yourself, may they see the light, realize that the killing and stealing does not lead to happiness so they can stop those things. So when you find it difficult to spread thoughts of goodwill to other people or try to make them limitless, you really have to stop and work on your understanding of goodwill. Because otherwise it becomes make-believe. You sit there sending out pink rays in all directions, but it doesn't really mean that much. When the meditation is over, you go back to your old prejudices or your old likes and dislikes. And you find yourself really wishing that someone else would suffer. And that's not accomplishing the purpose of goodwill. The purpose of goodwill is to establish a principle in the mind. The Buddha calls it a determination, that you're going to have goodwill regardless. And it's important to think about it in those terms. This is a determination that you're going to act on goodwill regardless of how the person is acting or speaking or thinking, that you're going to keep in the back of your mind. I want that person to understand the causes for true happiness. And that then becomes a part of your intention as you deal with that person. The goodwill is part of the Brahma Viharas. It's expressed in compassion. When you encounter someone who's suffering, you feel compassion. When you encounter someone who's already happy, you feel empathetic joy. You don't allow yourself to resent their happiness or their good fortune. And then there are the people who, regardless of how much you wish for them to be happy, are just determined not to understand, not to look for true happiness. And that's where you exercise equanimity. The equanimity there so helps save your goodwill from turning into burnout or turning into disappointment or turning into cynicism. You realize that for the time being, that person just doesn't want to get the message. There's some people you can't speak to about anything that has to do with true happiness because they simply won't listen. That's where you exercise equanimity. You live in a world with a lot of people you can't help. Even the Buddha couldn't save all living beings. This idea of a bodhisattva who aspires to save all living beings is really unrealistic. There are a lot of people out there who are just determined. 
they're going to stay here and just wandering around for a while. When you say they're beyond your help, you have to exercise equanimity. But that doesn't mean you don't have goodwill. The goodwill is there. It's just you want to make sure that it's realistic. Simply wishing people to be happy is not going to make it happen. The world is not entirely plastic. So there are times when goodwill is hard. And doesn't mean you should give up. It means you should try to understand goodwill. Understand the principle of karma. Understand why we're extending thoughts of goodwill. Someone came here one time. She was going through a divorce. And it was difficult. Her husband had been cheating on her. And of course, she was obsessed. I said, you've really got to spread thoughts of goodwill in their direction. The complaint was, oh, doesn't that give them power? Doesn't that give them an energy that they don't need, that it's going to make me more oppressed? And I said, no. You're putting yourself above the situation. When you spread thoughts of goodwill, it's for protection. On the one hand, they talk about spreading thoughts of goodwill and actually to protect yourself from danger. But it also protects yourself from yourself, your own unskillful actions, the things you're likely to say or do or think. When all you can think about is how horrible that person is and how much they deserve to suffer. Remember, the Buddha never talked about people deserving to suffer. Actions lead to consequences. But the actual suffering is something that comes from present karma. You've seen people in bad situations, and they're not suffering. You've seen other people in good situations, and they're suffering horribly. So simply because one person has a lot of really bad karma in the past doesn't mean that they have to suffer. If they can gain an understanding and develop the mind, as the Buddha said, that's limitless. In the past, bad karma is like a lump of salt that's thrown into this huge river of clean, clear water. But even though there's a lump of salt in it, the salt dissolves and the, the water is so fresh and there's so much of it that you can still drink it. So it is possible with other people and it's possible for ourselves. Another reason why we develop thoughts of goodwill. If our mind stays narrow, then we're going to suffer. If there are limitations on our goodwill, we're going to suffer. So it's not a question of who deserves or who doesn't deserve your goodwill. Remind yourself, you need your goodwill, and you benefit from making it limitless. So as we spread thoughts of goodwill, remember, this is not make-believe. We're trying to adjust our intentions. It's a determination. that regardless of how other people behave, we're going to keep our focus on a happiness that's harmless. That's the foundation of our practice. Otherwise, we'll never get free.